Um, hello, this is Womb with a View. It's the episode 10. Um, today our guests are Belle Staffy, who's a working class lesbian and activist who worked with various grassroots groups to challenge Leeds Council's managed approach, which effectively decriminalized prostitution in Holbeck. She was a sexual, sexual offender specialist for 20 years for West Yorkshire Probation Service and it is from a sexual offender perspective that she challenges the managed approach. Skylar is raising awareness of the harms of transgender medicine on children by riding around the USA on her motorbike to gender clinics which offer these services. Um, and we also have Gemma Ach Atchison, which uh, she's been a reoccurring guest. And we have Iris, the Ecuadorian mum, with us today. Um, first, I'm going to hand the mic over to uh, Skylar so she can let everyone know what she's doing in the States. Uh, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, actually, we have a, a fourfold mission as we travel the States. Um, and with our statement, uh, on our webpage, the ride of women's rebellion .com. Basically, number one, women are human beings. We have rights. And they don't include men. Uh, and number two, uh, women's sports were made. They were created by women for women. Get the men out of our sports. Number three, lesbians are female homosexuals. Consent cannot be coerced. And basically, stop raping our lesbians. We're not going to put up with it. Uh, number four, yeah, children cannot consent to being sterilized for life. You can't even get a tattoo before you're 18, but they'll let you cut off your healthy breast at 13. Right. And we're pretty angry about all of that. I'm a grandmother of four, um, you know. I don't want my children at risk. And, and, and we consider America in a state of emergency. And I am silenced on social media. Very frequently. <laughs> I've been permanently banned twice from Twitter. I am currently on a 30-day ban on Facebook for simply saying, get the men out of our women's Olympic dreams. Every single man that competes in the Olympics just steals the dreams from the woman that would have been in that position. These aren't, this isn't a free for all. This isn't, Oh, everybody can get in there. No, these positions are given out very, this, I don't know how, what's the word for it. Um, you have to audition for this stuff. And if you don't get in, you don't get in. And we got a 45 year old man that was yeah. mediocre. He was a mediocre weightlifter. You know, yeah. And he goes in there, and now he's stealing the Olympic dreams from women half his age. Um, we have found that in the military, 98% of the women that enlist in the military to protect our country have been sexually assaulted. We talked to a woman in an airport, and she said that she does not know one woman in our military that has not been sexually assaulted. And now she has men in her barracks men in her showers. And these are women that are trying to defend our country. Mm -hmm. And they're being threatened too to not speak out. Oh yeah, they can't speak it. That's why we are. Right. That's part of what we are. Um, basically women in America, if they speak out, they get fired from their jobs. Um, and they, you know, we get a lot of threats, you know, we don't get a lot of threats because I'm not even sure why. But we don't so far. <laughs> I'm grateful <laughs> for that. Um, but basically what we are doing is we started in Orlando. Uh, we covered three cities in three days because it was Memorial Day weekend. And so we kind of did stealth missions because it was just the two of us for two of them. And there, and there were two other women at one of them. And so we knew they were closed over Memorial Day weekend. So we went and we plastered our posters all over their doors. We left our calling card on their door that says the ride was here. We see you. Um, I've changed my tactics a little bit for the ones that are open and I wear a PEC shirt and on the back of the shirt, it says no child is born in the wrong body. And I wear that and I walk into their clinic 
and I hand them PEC materials, and I hand oh, them partners for ethical them. care. Huh? Partners for ethical care for anybody that might not know. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hand them our calling card. And whenever I'm handing it to them personally, I write, we see you on the bottom. Stop sterilizing kids. <laughs> because, you know, that's personal. Yeah. Um, and we do that everywhere we go. But here's the kicker. The main thing that we are doing isn't even the actual actions themselves. The main thing that we are doing is we talk to everyone, everyone, gas station attendants, waitresses, you know, the taxi driver outside the clinic, the tire people that gave us our fixed our tire for free because they found out what we were doing. Mm -hmm. um, everyone. And I can tell you categorically, average American is not down with this. Yeah, experience. no. They no. are not down with it. But we, you know, we have a president that is complicit. You know, he is complicit. Mm -hmm. or, or he's insane. Right. Because nobody believes that a man can just say, I'm a woman and magically be a woman. Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that unless they're brainwashed. In which case, you know, he's not qualified. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the Secretary of Health. Secretary of Health. I know. Is a man. I know. He doesn't understand that he's a man. I know. And he's a man that actually believes in giving Lupron, a cancer drug mm -hmm. used to castrate sex offenders. Yep. He believes in giving that to our healthy children. Yep. You know, and in California, they have retitled women's healthy breast, abnormal body parts. Which, mind you, that's what they tried to do back in, like, the 90s with the big fake titty boom, you know? They said that small breasts were a deformity. And that's, like, <laughs> it's the same shit, you know? It's, like, yeah. <laughs> shit, different spin. Right. You know? But I feel that America it really is in a state of emergence. Yeah. Because they're doubling down, you know? The very and first day in office. It's because they know that more people are becoming aware, just like I waitress, and I am constantly having conversations with um, my patrons, and also I've also been had my job threatened uh, by an eavesdropping couple too. So yeah, <laughs> it's starting to hit the working classes now. So um, I think that, that that's gonna have a lot of pushback, you know. I think that. Uh, if you can, uh, we need to, I don't know, we have a link to our YouTube channel. It's relatively new, but we have some pretty fun videos up there. Uh, we're making send a document. Them over to me and we'll, I'll send them over to Katie. Okay, because there's one I think that you will really enjoy where there was a crowd of families um, from toddlers, teenagers, and a bunch of parents. And one little kid, she looked like she was maybe five. When Bryn walks by and she's wearing her goddess crusader outfit, that's what I call it. She looks like a Greek goddess and she's wearing this or carrying this massive sign that says woman, now adult, human, female. And the daughter says, mom, what's that sign say? Or what does that lady sign say? And Bryn kind of turns back and, and tells her what it says. And I'm thinking, ooh, opportunity. <laughs> so I step over and just tell them what we're doing. And when we get ready to leave, you know, the last thing I say is simply the word woman is taken. And we turn to walk away and they all applaud. You know, they all applaud. And they're like, thank you. And honestly, every person I talk to out here about this, the average American, they're like, thank you for what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. and they're getting our information and they're passing it on. And so, sure, we have the events. Those are important. Because they, um, they document the fact that someone is walking in these people's doors. Yeah. Because you have a recording crew following you, right? You're recording, you're recording, blah, all this stuff, right? Right. It's awesome. It. We're making a documentary of Vaishnavi Sundar and Skirt Go Spinny are going to take all of our tons. But they kept telling us, you cannot get enough footage, you cannot get enough footage. So we record the craziest shit. Yeah. But, but the thing is, we also have on video when the road damage 
we she, she went off a road hazard that I thought was going to drop the bike. Oh and God! People think the most dangerous thing about this is you know possibly the mean people that are trying to uh, destroy us. Right, and that's it's not the, the main wrong internet. The main danger is the bike. Mm -hmm. Is riding that bike. You know, yeah. we've got over three thousand miles on that bike. Yeah. And the road hazards. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at a foot deep hole in the parking lot. <laughs> and when she hit that one, it broke the bike. Literally broke the bike. And so yeah. we've got a film where uh, my roommate who wired the bike, he wired the trunk in. And so I'm wrenching the trunk off. She's rewiring the bike. We're in a Dunkin' Donuts parking lot. You know? <laughs> and, and, and you've got Bob on the phone going, now cut the red wire. <laughs> now cut the green wire. <laughs> and I'm sitting there laughing, wrenching it off, going, it sounds like one of those movies with a bomb, you know? Yeah. We're not bored. So, Skyla, have you had any pushback at all? No. After that, we haven't had any. Now, there was, there's a couple of people that when I, today especially, in downtown Detroit, where... When I tell them exactly what we're doing, they they go into the, well, I believe that somebody can be born in the wrong body and stuff like that. But they're not being, you know, we're, we're just talking. We're just talking. And even when, um, like, I'm hanging up these big posters today, the stickers do better. They're, they're easier to get away with. <laughs> I have yeah. discovered this. And I pick really good spots for the stickers so that people are more likely to leave them there longer. But today I was putting up a big poster on one of these poles and one of the dudes that gets paid to keep the area clean um, said, you can't put that here. And I said, oh, well, where can I put that? <laughs> Is there a place near here? Is there anywhere that I can hang these posters and it's okay? And that man took a look at me and he said, you know what? I never saw you do what you do. I mm. love peace. And then he walked on his way. I feel that many of the people, see, because I love people. I mean, I genuinely love people. And I leave friends behind everywhere I go. Mm. Because I, yeah. I just do. And That's so lovely. we're not dealing with people in positions of authority. Um, I understand that, you know, most of those people, they are simply doing a job. They're getting paid to do a job. And so I try to respect that and because I feel that respect goes both ways. And mm -hmm. so I actually, in his little park area there that he was responsible for, I left that one. I put one other on a pole that his supervisor probably wouldn't see. <laughs> and, and then I just did uh, stickers after that because they were less obtrusive. Um, and I tried to put them in places where they looked really nice. I'll be posting them up. I post up the updates every day because we are running on donations. I mean, literally running on donations. Um, and so I like people to see what they're getting, you know, what we're doing. So we're working on, we have a ton of footage and we, we need to get more of it up because we have footage from every city we've gone to. And we've only got a few of the footages up, you know, just a few. But that's because we were running so fast. We were going so we covered the East Coast in like what a week or something. Yeah, it was insane. And then it dawned on us that yeah, that's not going to work all the way across this. This our country, America is huge. That's something yeah. that lucky you came to know is that America is huge. It's about and a three day drive if you're high on meth straight through to San Francisco, but that's about as fast as it could possibly get. <laughs> <laughs> That's well on the motorcycle, uh, being that I'm like 61 years old and actually physically disabled, uh, I can ride. I think I can pull off maybe three, four hours if I max have to, but that'll tear yeah. me up. And so, yeah. what we did was see Joy, who joined just to help me do this. The two women that joined me, Zeta and Joy, they gave up their lives for months to join me just to help me do it so I wouldn't be alone. So I actually have a support van and a bike and Joy helps ride 
half the time. So when I get really tired or like, oh, God, that one day the wind, the wind was so hard. That you don't real. I'm going to be strong by the time I get to Seattle. <laughs> I'm telling you. But anyway, you know, the wind started just wearing it wears you down, and so I just had to get off. And I said, God, I feel so damn old. I just feel so old. I'm too old for this shit. And I was freaking out, you know. And Joy got on the bike, and I don't know, hour and a half, hour and a half, two hours, and got off the bike and said, No, it's not just you. That is hard. And I was like, yay, I don't feel so old. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're up to. Um, we're just raising awareness with every single person we meet. And we find that as they see what we're doing, um, even though, okay, even the lady that actually believes that somebody could be born in the wrong body agreed with us, stay away from the kids. Stay away from the kids, even if you believe in that stuff. So, hey, you can believe in any religion you want. Right. You know, and it is a religion. But don't induct our children into your religion, especially when your religion tells them to amputate healthy body parts and take cancer drugs and tell your parents you're going to kill yourself. Yeah. You know, keep that crap away from our children. Yeah. And I, I couldn't get, I couldn't stay on social media enough. They keep silencing. And all I could think is they can't silence me on the street. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know the only way to do that is to arrest me, and I don't do anything to be arrested for. Yeah, you know. So I don't know. Is there anything else that I should be telling them, Joy? <laughs> <laughs> she helps. <laughs> um, just you know, if there's anything else, we can always come back to you in the end. I'm just so glad to have you on, though. Um, I really appreciate the invitation. Yeah, I just want to get the message out there, you know, as far as possible, wherever we can, because it really is um, a state of emergency here in America. The UK has made such great strides, and uh, yeah, no one, like, no one, it's just like only the women here are paying attention, but we're trying to just get the message out. Um, I do talk to the men a lot. As a matter of fact, I talked to a man today whose wife is in a federal prison. Mm. And he said he didn't think the men were in the federal prisons. And so I said, well, do me a favor. Handed him one of our flower flyers, which has my webpage, which they can contact me on it. And I said, do me a favor. Call her. Talk to your wife. Give me some yeah. insight. And Ask her. Because, yeah, my mom's friend who got out of prison after 10 years said, we got over 15 fucking men up in there saying, and all they got to do, Tanya, she said, is say, I'm a woman. <laughs> It's crazy. Where, where, where is that one? It was in New Jersey. <laughs> They're protesting still, though, there because uh, a bunch of the guards um, are were sexually assaulting, raping, and beating up the women in the prison. Um, and some of them are being locked up. And the women that are now outside of the prison are protesting, including my mom's friend. Um, it's been written up in like the newspapers and stuff. Um, after the ride is over, I'm going to have to go back to the East Coast because the governor of Maine just, you know, oh, yeah. actually it wasn't the governor. We tried to contact the governor to make sure she would veto it because Maine in the House and the Senate both, they just ran it through. Mm -hmm. I think they gave women 30 minutes to say something and they just ran it through. Yeah. Women in America are a commodity. Yeah, no, We're it's a commodity, and that's why they will not want to free us. We the need to act, we need to treat us. every every little thing as an act of war at this point, like yeah. because it is. So it's like you know we're gonna fight it. It's oh, war. speaking of which, you know, President Biden just put up a post. It was in, uh, referring to our Second Amend Amendment right to carry weapons, and he said, "Well, you know, you you know, you think you want to carry weapons to be able to take on the government? Well, then you better have like F-15s and nuclear weapons." Now let's take a look at that sentence, people. What is he saying to Americans in that sentence? Yeah. Is he actually telling us? That, okay, if we are afraid our government is illegal, which it is, are we, if we're afraid that our government is removing all of our human rights, which it is, 
and and we try to stand up against that. You're going to nuke us? Are right. You nuke right. Yeah. Are you going to nuke your fucking that? American people? Come on now. That's a really fucking. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty crazy. It's a little scary. Honestly, yeah. I just don't understand the language. Right. You know, like, what is that? I'm telling you right now, you know, my family left Hungary to get away from all this this type of shit because they wanted to be part of a do democracy. And um, when I like know about my family's history and I read a lot of things about like the Soviet Union and stuff, um, we're not that far behind. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna bring on a. Uh, Bell Staffy, but we can always come back and talk some more because that's what this show is all about. Uh, here she comes. So tell us all about what you've been up to. Well, I was going to say, look, I'm a bit late to the party, so could I like go in a bit, please, just so I can get warm to the room? Oh, yeah. I, I'm really quite agitated at not being able to tune in properly and on time. <laughs> can I just go at last or uh, towards the end or something, please? Yes, I, I just want to, I just, I'm quite. Just, yeah. <laughs> well, you're, all, you're all good. You're all good. Skylar, Skylar's enough. Keep us going, Skylar. She's like, I'm muting. What about Gemma? Does Gemma have anything for us? Um, well, one thing um, that's happened in the UK this week, hi, lovely, is, um, is that the government has put out something which is a rape review. Essentially, what this is, He's saying what feminists have been saying for years, that the male-dominated and male-run justice system is failing women when it comes to rape conviction. And at the yeah. moment in the UK, the, the crimes that are um, reported more than ever, and yet at historical rates in conviction, are domestic abuse and rape. So basically, all the crimes that are typically committed by men towards women and girls are not being convicted. And I don't just mean, like, a little bit. I mean, like, they're less than 2% yeah. of chance yeah. to, to being charged. Not even convicted, just charged. Mm -hmm. And the reason that this is really important um, to me personally, but also to, to women generally is because sexual offences, they are two things. They are serial offences. It's never just once. Right. And they are escalation offences. Right. So men that kill women and girls always have these things in their history. Always. And I am saying this as a sister of a murdered girl. And the man that killed my sister had multiple attempted rapes and two rapes in his history. Now, to me, what how I feel about it is the state is condoning and enabling violence against women and girls. Oh, yeah. Because at the same time this is going on, Ofsted, who they um, in the UK they inspect our schools and, and you know measure outcomes and stuff like that right they have reported that nine out of ten girls feel unsafe in school because of rape culture and sexism yeah and the the thing is is that we're we're, we're saying that this is okay because our mm -hmm. justice system i mean the majority of our laws made in the uk were made before women even had the vote right yeah. I mean, so same with them in America. Same. It's like a society is that's built not for us, <laughs> without us in mind. It's the foxes in charge of the hen house. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. And it, to me, um, you know, I, I hear people say, "Oh, you know, you know, men, men are good guys. You, you know, stop alienating them." Blah blah blah. Right? No. So. Throughout our history, the suffragettes tried asking nice for 50 years, okay? 
They tried asking nice. They tried, you know, sugarcoating it for men, not being mean to men, and it didn't work. Only once mm -hmm. they turned radical did they start seeing results. And yeah. the thing is, we've given men a millennia to be yeah. nice, and all, all the rights that we have got from having rape and domestic violence even being made a crime, the right to have a bank account, the right to rent, the right to have access to our children, all these rights that we've got, they haven't happened because men have realised this is the right thing to do. So here you go, here are your rights. That's not, that's not what's happened. Right. They have all been because women have fought for them. And yeah. the state at the moment is, you know, the government is currently pretending to give a shit about violence against women and girls. Right. And they're giving funding to various cities, you know, for violence against women and girls. And what will happen will be, they'll say, oh, let's spend, spend it on CCTV and street lighting. What's really important, and what I've said in quite a few meetings, is rapists and vampires are not the same thing. Rapists are not afraid of the dark. So why do you think streetlights <laughs> right. are going to help the situation? Right. Yeah. It's got nothing right. to do with it. So um, the CPS last year was taken to court by um, some amazing feminist organisations called the Centre for Women's Justice and the Environment Against Women Coalition. Because what the CPS do is they have like a system um, based on victim blaming things. So, you know, if, if a woman is seen on CCTV smiling at the perpetrator that's following her, or being remotely nice to them, then they're going to say, no, we're not taking it forward. But what happens when you have a creepy guy in your face doing that? You need to think about your safety. You need to think, how can I give the message no, but not piss him off so much that he's going to hurt right. me? Right. So our, our justice system is just completely out of... Like, it's just completely not connected to women and the reality of living as women and girls and it's completely dismissing over half of the population because essentially yeah. what it is is a boys club where they're condoning and enabling each other yeah. and the other thing that is really affecting all this is pornography oh, because yeah. you, you know 40 years ago if you went to a police officer and you said I was crying I asked him to stop and then he pulled my hair and then he punched me in the face and then he spat on me and all this and I've got these bruises he would have take, maybe taken it more seriously mm -hmm. but now well that doesn't mean he didn't know you consented because that's part of sex now according to pornography right. yeah. so right. it's you know in rape in the in the UK, because I'm not sure about US systems, but in the UK, the woman has to say she didn't consent, but there also needs to be proof that the man knew that she didn't consent. Oh, yeah. And so that's the part that pornography is affecting. Because if the police officer that's been jacking off to Pornhub on that stuff that you're reporting to, that's going to affect his attitude, as will be the men that you know work at the cps yeah. as will the prosecutor as will the judge as will the men on the jury who feel defensive because they've been jacking off to that stuff so they're gonna you know mm -hmm. it all it all affects stuff and yet there's no regulation so basically we have wankers running our justice system and yet they expect women and girls to feel safe and they expect us to believe that they give a shit about us when they enable this to go on and on and on, and then when th when it gets to the body at the end, then they pretend to care. Right. I mean, frankly, it's an insult. And with this whole trans thing, it's an insult as well because these things happen to us because we're women and girls. My sister is dead because she was a teenage girl, and teenage girls are seen as sexual objects that are desirable. That is why she's dead. She can't identify out of her grave. She right. can't decide, oh, I'll start wearing blue and playing with trucks so I won't be dead anymore. That's mm -hmm. not going to happen. So to me, it's it's an insult to dismiss an oppression, a millennia from, from hundreds of years of the witch hunt to, you know, to FGM, to menstruation huts, to the girls who are being killed in China because they happen to be female babies. All of this stuff that's going on, the fact that 
more women and girls have been killed just for being women and girls than men have been killed in all of the wars of like the 50th century and stuff you know i feel like it's dismissing that our experience isn't lipstick and heels our experience is that you teach us that we're responsible for our safety and men know this men know this and the reason that i know that men know this is because as soon as they have a teenage daughter suddenly it changes from not all men suddenly it is all men i've always known it's all men so you right. can't go here you can't go there you can't dress this men know why they're too scared to go into a prison shower they know the reality of the situation they're just pretending not to because they want to condone and enable each other so yeah that's what i'm mad about this week yeah no makes perfect sense man it's like what was the outcome uh, in the court case Gemma, the center for uh, women's justice so um yeah the the outcome was uh, the high court they didn't find for them but what 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 did happen was initially the cps was denying that they held rape to a new merit based system they denied that that happened but when they took them to um judicial review they had to admit actually yeah we have been doing this so you know it it achieved something you know it achieved that so um I don't I don't I don't know if anything's gonna change. I don't think anything beyond tokenism will change. I think feminists should take the opportunity now, whilst they're pretending to give a shit to look good publicly. We should be going to gatekeepers, counsellors, you know, people who are pretending to care and say, Oh, okay, really do this then. We we need to be using this opportunity to be making progress because they don't give a shit. And yes, I know it's not all men, but frankly, you know, which numbers are higher? The views on child pornography numbers or the child maintenance payment numbers? And if men want a better reputation, then they're going to have to reverse that as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Absolutely perfect, yeah. I'm lovely, really. <laughs> I, I am friendly, but I'm just very angry at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta move around my computer. I need to put it on the charger. Um, Anyone yeah. have any questions for Gemma? I just, it just pisses me off. That's the only thing I have to say about that. Do you have figures the same as here in a, in the US? Like it's very similar. Um, I mean, they barely ever. Uh, sorry, y'all. It barely ever, anyone ever barely gets popped for rape. And there's such a big backlog of rape kits that have never been tested. And in certain states, they've noticed, like certain states where I guess people made us think about it. I think Ohio was one. Um, they, they did a bunch of the backlog and... It was, uh, and they realized, you know, there was a ton of serial rapists and linked them to like a serial killer. You know what I mean? And it's just, uh, you know, Skylar has to choose to unmute herself. Uh, I'm just pissed. I'm sorry, but I'm pissed. Yeah. Because I'm a multiple rape victim that never reported one. Because I knew for a fact that I would just rape, get raped again in court and the guy that did right. it wouldn't have anything happen. Because right. in America, they do not do it. Rapists are given a get-out-of-jail-free card yeah, every they just, day. They drag and you can them through the there are over five women murdered by domestic violence alone in America every single day. Every single day, at least five women are murdered by the person that's supposed to love and protect them. Can you imagine if we started doing that in retaliation? It would be a fucking national emergency. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine well, if we started doing that? I'm really careful with what I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, ju just to be clear, I'm not inciting that we do that. I'm not saying that's that's a good idea. No. I'm just saying 
the, the reason the reality, I was so close to Joy was because I saw her bio and it simply said, dead men don't rape. Yeah. And my first thought was, oh, I like this one. <laughs> so I direct messaged her. And do you know, she had just, what was it, like a day or so before, hours, hours before, it was hours before, she was going to send me a DM because she read what I was doing and wanted to help. And then she changed her mind to about sending it because she got nervous and, kind of, you know, has anxiety about that type stuff. And then she got this direct message from me saying, oh, my God, I love that. Dead men don't rape. And she's like, I got to tell her. And so that's how we even ended up doing this. That's because awesome. My thought well, is that if, if the parents of the children that are being raped started removing the rapist from the face of the earth, then they might get the idea that rape is a bad plan because I'm going to get dead. Um, if the husbands, the fathers, or the women themselves that are raped started removing these people from the face of the planet, then they would start to understand that if I rape someone, I'm not going to be here anymore. And they would stop. And honestly, I don't know that anything else will stop them. Because women are considered property, period. We're property. You know, if you're married or you have a boyfriend, um, say you're, okay, back when I was married, back before I realized I was a lesbian, I go to AA. I'm at an AA meeting, and there's a man there that wants to give me a hug after the meeting because they do that a lot in AA. I didn't like him. I didn't trust him. I got a bad feeling from him. I said, no. Well, this is AA. We hug each other. I said, I don't care. I'm going to hug you. He still reached for me. At the time, I was still married. My husband comes walking in the door and says, what the hell do you think you're doing? And the guy immediately, oh, no, oh, no, I didn't know. I didn't know. So he couldn't respect my no. But the minute I was that other person, that other man's property, he would respect that. He would respect that man, but not me. Yeah, that sexual objectification culture. So um, I write a lot about that. And that's just that's just a fancy word of sort of saying that men see us as objects instead of subjects. And the thing is with objects is they are disposable, as we see with the fact that we're, we're murdered and killed all the time. And that's an acceptable state of things because objects are replaceable and disposable. And the other thing that objects are is the objects are there to serve the needs of the subject. Think about all the unpaid labour that women provide that men just expect and feel entitled to. And objects are also to their product specification. So you think about, you know, we're supposed to be thin, we're supposed to be white, we're supposed to have the boobs, we're supposed to have this, this and this. Until we're rehumanised as seen as people, you know, why would the justice system pay any attention? Because objects are objects and not people. Um, and that's, you know. Is, uh, is this new thing, this new porn thing that says that women are empowered by being strangled during sex. This is supposed to be a good thing. This is supposed to be a good thing. Do, do these people not understand that when you strangle someone, they get brain damage? Oxygen to the brain. They don't get the oxygen to the brain. They get brain damage. It's mass it's grooming. That's that's what it is. Pornography yeah. is mass grooming. And it grooms our children. Like The average age of exposure to pornography in the United Kingdom is 11 years old. I'm not sure about in the US. But that's, that's what it is. Like Young um, girls that I work with. Saying- Oh, is it? Well, young young girls that I I work with. So I I run an organisation that works with young people who have been victims of child sexual abuse and things like that. And um, they they will like proudly say, you know, that they have things that they call love bruises. They're proud of that. But the thing is, is because if you're teaching young girls that their self-worth is in 
being what men want them to be and that's how they measure their self-worth and that's how they measure how good they are then of course they're going to do that and we look in the media even when we had a female prime minister it was about a haircut it was about the heels she was wearing when you read about the world it's how the women look and what the men are doing and that's you know we tell tell that to our young people over and over again even in the toys that they get when they're little, we get little girls' prams and kitchens and pretend makeup and princesses and all that stuff. And we get boys things that they can do. We, we teach our children these things. Um, and, you know, we, we run a programme called the Yes Matters Commitment, which is to tackle rape culture in schools. So if, you know, you've got a, a daughter or a son that you think needs to learn about this stuff, um, you know, We'll come in. We'll come in and do that. And if any young person needs help, because child sexual abuse perpetrators usually tend to be family members or family friends, so that's a really difficult situation, especially mm. in lockdown if you're trapped with your abuser at the moment. You can contact us on Twitter, on TikTok, on Facebook. It's completely free. doesn't need a conviction. We will be there for you. Is the Twitter the Anyone? same name as everything else? um yeah yeah um it's all all the same stuff and or you can just google us but yeah any young person we're here for you at any time so yeah that's really awesome jenna i try <laughs> <laughs> i do what i can I oh. think we've uh, given Belle staff oh. it long enough. To bed in. Yeah. To bed in. No, I was, to be honest, I was so traumatised by not being able to get in there. And it was just like, I found a back door and I got in. I don't know how I'm here, but <laughs> I got in. I persist with things, you see. Well, we're glad to have you. Right. Well, we've eased you in gently, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was just, I was actually quite... um like that about not being able to get in and being late and stuff um and it, i was just really caught on the back foot because i could not get it to load on my phone and anyway i'm here blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah um right what well tell us a little bit about you what you've been doing oh right okay and um, the amazing thing you've achieved in yeah. Holland. that's a massive victory you amazing woman tell us yeah. all Come on. a feminist and resident fucking punch in the bollocks to the sex industry okay the, and um it's it, this will have anyway i'll i've I can't, right, I've been active, an activist against the managed approach in Leeds, which was a prostituted, red light, decriminalised area. Um, what I've done, I can't just, I'm not, I'm not um, skilled enough to just really all off. So I've written a bit um, yeah. that I'm go through um, and to take us like to where we are today, because um, I'm not actually... Um, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll get on. I'll yeah, just go on in it. Fuck on with it. Yeah, <laughs> jump in. Right, okay. I'm excited to hear about it. Right. Okay, so I've just written a bit, so I'll refer to it as I'm going down because I'm not skilled enough to just do it. Okay. You right. are skilled. You are. Come on. Uh, right. <laughs> right. I've been actively campaigning against Leeds City Council's man managed approach to on-street prostitution since hearing about the murder of Daria Pionka in 2015. Ms. Pionka was trafficked and a prostituted woman who was robbed and murdered by a local man who is now serving a life sentence. She was kicked to death in what is called the managed approach, which was intended to be a safe zone for prostituted women to sell sex which was started 12 months before she was murdered. The managed approach itself is a desolate wasteland near to the residential areas of Holbeck. At night, business is on their clothes and the area is completely abandoned. I've been there numerous times and can confirm that if you were to have to scream for help, there will be no one to hear those screams. This is why the safe zone wasn't safe 
and the reason that the prostituted women and teenage girls started to work from the residential areas. At least if you screamed for help in the residential areas, someone may ring it into the police as a noise complaint, if nothing else. Putting the words prostitution and safety in the same sentence is a misnomer. As a retired sex offender specialist, I was horrified at the notion that a safe zone could be provided for those women. I was also very alarmed that the council had chosen Holbeck for this managed approach for on-street prostitution. Holbeck has always been a very deprived inner city area of Leeds, near the motorway links to the rest of the UK. The residential area of Holbeck is tightly packed with back-to-back -back housing. What Holbeck wasn't was a magnet to unconvicted sex offenders, some traveling two and a half hours to Holbeck in their family saloons with child seats in the back to pay to sexually abuse extremely vulnerable, drug addicted, trafficked, chronically ill women and teenage girls. I began to work alongside residence groups in Holbeck and some residents agreed to talk to me about what it was like living in Holbeck. I was particularly interested in hearing the account of female Holbeck residents living near the managed approach and living with the managed approach. I used this information to inform my article, Holbeck Drowning Not Swimming, as I did on the advice and intelligence given to me by exited women from the sex industry. In September 2020, I spent three weeks in Holbeck studying Leeds City Council's managed approach in order to write an article on this on my, based on my findings. The article was in order, it was intended to shame Leeds City Council for funding the inappropriately named managed approach, which was acting as a magnet to abusers from a vast area of the country expose the vulnerability of prostitutes, women and girls working in Holbeck and question the current patch them up and send them back out again, which is the current order of the day for Leeds City Council exit strategies. It was also to support the residents and families of Holbeck by exposing the problems the managed approach caused them individually and as a community by this vast visiting marauding army of punters. It was also to start to encourage the authorities to focus on the punters coming to Holbeck in a bid to reduce the demand for prostituted women and girls there. I wanted these men, men to think twice about coming to Holbeck to sexually abuse any woman or girl they could. I wanted them too to feel scared, too scared to come to Holbeck. The article went out, The it was decided because we had a sudden um, decision from the council it was going to be closed within a day of it closing um on punter networks um sorry no um right go back to that um feminists and residents of holbeck have fought for years to close the managed approach and we have succeeded it's not going to open up again i attended a virtual meeting of Leeds city council two days ago the executive committee it's not opening up again Feminists and residents succeeded by being persistent and challenging the council on every single level. We all bombarded them from, quote, fuck off pumpers graffiti in the managed approach for the international talk about it event, impressive banner drops from the viaduct to emails, vigils and speaking to the press and working, all working together to end this monster. Since the announcement of the managed approach is to close, I have again spent significant time there in person. The policing of the residential areas has become intense and they are definitely focusing the police on the curb crawlers now. This is to the detriment, this is, this is a deterrent that I have wanted and have been engineering for years. I have an active SOC account on a punter forum to monitor these men and on-street prostitution in Leeds. It is also designed to sow dis-ease into this network in a bid to scare men away from Holbeck. These men are outraged that the managed approach is closing 
and they are blaming it on punters who give us all a bad name. Fucking irony. <laughs> wow. Okay, when it was announced, I was on Punt Forum and I've been sowing disease in there for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, actual punters were saying, it's all happening now. I recommend you stay away. Um, that was the announcement. Other punters are reading these comments, including my own reporting, cars being stopped and men's details being taken, and they are taking it on board. I'm still very involved in the residential areas of Holbeck, working alongside residents groups. The managed approach may be defeated, but we have not defeated the causation of prostitution, which is poverty and misogyny. I will continue to fight the causes of prostitution and will continue to expose the men who choose to exploit and sexually abuse these girls and teenage, these women and teenage girls. You're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, well done. Yes. So badass. Badass. Brilliant. It's been a long campaign. I, it's been a long game with this. But I say, you know, I've gone out and done articles and stuff like that and used my call. I've used what I've had. All of us who's been active against the managed approach, we've all used what we've had. Mm. Yeah. I'm a sex offender specialist, a retired one. That was my angle. That's what I thought yeah. I could use. And, and that's what informed my article. And that was also informed my angle of going after the punters as a deterrent, shaming them. I spoke to a lot of exited women um, about what will really frighten a punter. We enacted that. We yeah. are enacting that. We are still enacting that. Um, because again, the managed approach has stopped, but it's still operating in the residential areas. And my article wasn't based in the resident in the managed approach; it was all in the residential areas, and that bothers me a lot because there are a lot of young families there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I feel like there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, Eastern European women that are like being trafficked right now all throughout yeah. Europe. Especially at the moment, at the moment, I monitored that as well. Trafficking is massive in prostitution. Therefore, it's massive in Holbeck. Um, mm. There was a number of Polish women um, that have moved on. Now, what we can't, yeah, I can talk about it. Um, okay. What we were worried about at the last meeting is there were a lot of young Romanian women before mm -hmm. the COVID lockdown, and they were being minibused in um, to the zone worked and then many bust out they weren't allowed to talk to anybody so you know um they've disappeared but prostituted women never disappear right they go somewhere so right. what we're trying to do is we've all got ears to the ground we're trying to find a load of romanian trafficked teenage girls at the moment in america it's like missing. sorry in in america it's really huge in cities like in massage parlors and stuff but in philadelphia in particular um there's like known uh massage parlors that are really just filled with eastern european women that a lot of them came here thinking they had a different job and having their passport taken and they're paying off a debt yeah um all the, all the girls all the, and I say girls because a lot of them are teenage girls. I'm yeah. not surprising to women. A lot of them are teenage girls. Uh, they, they are trafficked because they can't speak a word of English. And it's like, okay, how did you get to Britain? Okay, you're trafficked. And, you know, the amount... But we are concerned and we're saying we are... We're not just, like, policing it all, like... Whoa, 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 yeah. like we are. We have got a, a care as well to the women and we, we you know when women go missing we question where they are um and when we see women out um i don't have anything to do with ringing the women into the dedicated number that's the street ain't the the residents group do that i'm interested in the punters i i i target the punters and i ring the punters in and i i yeah. put them in as general will know punter of the week and stuff which i've encouraged yeah to do awesome. which again is a massive deterrent because it appeared yeah. on the punter network it's like oh they're putting our punter of the week up and it's like <laughs> you know and they're shitting themselves mm -hmm. i want i'm glad about that because that's what yeah. I, do. I worked for 20 years with men like this behind bars as far as i'm concerned they're just not behind bars anymore they've got family cars driving around 
Right. Like unconvicted yeah. sex offenders. Yeah. It's accountability, isn't it? It's accountability. It's like, you know how Harry Potter has like the cloak of invisibility? I honestly think that some men think their penis is their cloak of <laughs> invisibility for yeah. accountability. Yeah. Because when, when they do stuff to it, it, you know, she was asking for it. She didn't leave, you know. And mm. They, they don't have enough self-control and accountability when it comes to doing that. But funnily enough, they do have enough self-control and accountability to be running our institutions, our governments, our religions, our corporate. It's funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. And it's also really funny because the other night when I was in Holbeck, it was really funny that when they're cruising around still, because some of them going there still, they're cruising around at two miles an hour at two o'clock in the morning no signal on and cruising. And then they get stopped at the bottom of the road and spoken to by the police for curb crawling. Um, and then it's amazing how they suddenly purposefully, with direction, drive towards the motorways home before their wives are told. You know, and that is happening. And, like, and that's, that, that's fantastic because word gets around so fast. And the biggest thing punters are frightened of is exposure. Because yeah. I've, asked women, I've asked women that have spent years being raped by them that are now thankfully out of the industry. Exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that they're just going to move it on to another area, though? Um, I, I don't know. Well, Leeds City Council have basically, because at this meeting at this virtual one I went to, um, they're saying that they're going to, hang on, going to make it more... more of a city-wide approach to it, which means that it's not going to concentrate in one area and drag, you know, the, the stuff that is, is happening at least, like, if I've, I've, I've watched a brothel for a long time doing this on the back streets. Brothels aren't just brothels, as we know, you know, it's a centre for, for class A drugs being dealt, it's trafficking, it's all in one address, you've got, mm -hmm. and that is organised fucking serious crime, mm -hmm. it's not like new library books, it's trafficking, it's human slavery, Yeah. it's rape, it's, you know, yeah. all in one address, and then buying drugs, it, I, one address in particular, it was a hub. It was an absolute hub for the women in the that were being trafficked, that were being taken there, the drug dealing there, little tiny rats, which was obviously crack and heroin, um, and then the, the prostitutes, women and dealers going there all day and every day. These once it turns into a brothel, it's, that's twenty four seven in yeah. a residential area where there are families bring trying to bring up their children. Right. Yeah. I like how you compare it to library books. Like, that's the most British thing you could possibly have <laughs> Thank you for not saying English, Gemma. I really respond. Thank you for calling me British, not English. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, well, it's not like overdue fucking library books, is it? It's like, you know, and the crime around, because I parked outside one, the crime that generated 24 7 was unbelievable. It never shut down, it never stopped. There was even a madam that used to come out and sweep the streets at four in the morning before the punters went in. Oh my God. And this is next door to families and people that can't get out. The people that got out of Holbeck got out a few years ago. The, the ones who had some money and some could get out. Mm -hmm. People that left in Holbeck now are hostages. Yeah. Um, the prostitutes have all moved there and all the drug users have moved there because they know that they can get a constant supply of class A drugs. Mm -hmm. So it's fuck. They've had they've really you won't get that if it's if a city if it's a city-wide approach as they say they're going to do now. Right. Um that's not concentrating on one of the fucking poorest areas of bloody Leeds, you know. Right. Yeah. The, it wasn't in a nice rich area, North Leeds or something. It was right smack, one of the poorest areas with, yeah. you know, chron people who are chronically ill and can't mm -hmm. leave. And, and there's a school there as well, you know, and there was even the headmaster was worried about, and girls were being propositioned on the way to school by paedophiles who were targeting them. And we know they're targeting them because mm -hmm. it was on the network. And also they were targeting them because they were in school uniform. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's so true. They're underage and they're not prostitutes women. And that's why women couldn't go. I listen to these women and the girls, and this is why they couldn't leave their property when it went dark at night without a chaperone, you know, because they were too scared. And women were abducted in Holbeck in the back of cars and raped. And the rapist got away with it by saying, oh, we thought she was a prostitute. Right. 
So women were living and girls were living with this for nearly seven years in Holbeck. And I wanted to speak to them. And I was really fortunate because I really got into the community and got trusted mm -hmm. um, and talked and engaged with them where with something like, you really have to, you can't just go in there and oh, do it all for everyone. Like, aren't I a savior? Aren't I a savior? It doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. It really mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. And I had to be really careful that I wasn't overstepping what I was capable of doing and disempowering Holbeck and stuff. Yeah. Like going off and doing yeah. what I did, which was no, but that article, I say, I showed that to my sources in Holbeck and they were well happy before it went out. And as far as I was concerned, that's who, that I was glad about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, I got sure. five goals to to hit with that with that piece of work with that research. Mm -hmm. That that's so important because that that means that what you've done there is you've gone in there and done like, you've done community development work, and also that means that now um, they have those tools that yeah. if anything else like that comes up they can do that themselves now mm -hmm. or you know and that that's a, as a result of the work you've done and you know how you know how you said about the schools and stuff um and part of the oh it's like the greater manchester women and girls blah 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 panel and um you know the the work that the surveillance that some of the police have done around like women's safety they've said that the main hours where there's activity against women and girls is between three o'clock and eight o'clock in the morning and when um in in no in the uh, in the afternoon so when the girls are coming out of school yeah. until the girls have to go in because it's yeah. getting towards their bedtime it's always aimed at the girls because teenage girls they're vulnerable aren't they and therefore that's what that's what men want they want yeah, girls, so you they can feel more manly. Any female in Holbeck, any female in Holbeck was not safe. I had to pass as a punter to do this piece of work and go undercover there because I would not have been safe if they found out I was a woman. I would have been dead if they found out I was a feminist. I would have been bloody put in a wicked man or something. Mm. I really had to pass as a punter because it's not safe. It was how Holbeck was being a center of magnet for sex offenders and pervy men and sadistic men. These aren't nice, good men. These are men that like screwing something that is half alive and passing in and out of consciousness. Sounds like Kensington in Philadelphia. These are crack addicted teenage trafficked girls. And you have to be a particular yeah, kind of man to keep your penis erect to ejaculation. The reason, does, it, does it make sense that all of our young girls are running from girlhood and womanhood like a house on fire. Why yeah. do they think there's a 4,400% increase in yeah. these girls that, that want to be boys? Yeah. It's yeah, all connected, boys. isn't it? Yeah, it's all just connected. In the whole bit, in, in particular, it's class. It's class-based. Yeah. Sex-based as a class, I see sex as a class. Sex-based class, it's it, it's class-based. Oh, these well. are working class. These are these are a, apart from the British girls are extremely young, um, all addicted, to, really addicted to, to stuff. Um, it was it was honestly, I, I had night, I had some nights after that. Or it was in Holbeck that I really, really had nightmares about what I'd seen. And I'm I'm a seasoned retired sex offender specialist. Yeah. It really affected me. Um yeah. and I, there were times in that van that I was petrified and I couldn't move. I'll be honest with you. It was, yeah. that, bad. It was that bad. Yeah. Um it's it's true, isn't it, Izzy, that um there's like a correlation between girls in state care. Yeah. And yeah. girls in the but sex girl industry. The British yeah. girls, the ones that were gravitating to Holbeck, were runaways. A lot of them were runaways from children's homes. And the link between children's homes and prostitution and grooming is massive, and it always has been, you know, and it's on the streets of Holbeck. I had two girls that tried to get in the van, and um, I, they, they, because they thought I was a punter, I was going up to park up somewhere, and they tried to get in the van. I stopped at the lights. I had someone with me that night um, who was horrified, never came out with me again. Um, and their eyes were just wild. Um, underneath their thick makeup, they still had fucking acne. 
Oh, you know, and that doesn't get reported. And that's why when I say girls in Holbeck, I really fucking mean girls. Yeah. Three yeah. These are teenage girls. These were 14, 15 year old girls. Yeah. You know, yeah. that kind of gravitated to there because, <sighs> because they are, yeah, a lot, of, most of them I would say are abused and come out, the, come out of the care system. Sorry. Yeah. And they're almost, they're, they're, they're being abused for Holbeck. And I can't remember. Is that the is that the only area that this was tried out on? No, they is tried it? it in Ipswich ten years ago, and a guy called Stephen Wright murdered five of the prostituted women. And then Leeds decides to oh, it's a good idea. Let's take it up then. <laughs> and in Leeds, you know, Daria Pionka was murdered. Mm -hmm. You know, no, in Hips, Ipswich there was five fucking murders of prostituted mm -hmm. women. In Atlantic City, there was a big case like that. Um, my stepsister at the time was um, a prostitute, um, addicted to heroin. This was like 15, 20 years ago, but um, there was a serial killer uh, that was um, called the the White Horse or the Black Horse Pike Strangler. Um, and it, the fucked up thing was, is like, he still has been caught, but all of them know who it was. My oh, stepsister wow. knew who it was. He had a foot fetish. And the thing was, is he would point their bodies in a certain, so all their feet were pointed to a certain way, very ritualistic. Yeah. And like, it's a known sex offender, but like, I forget what the semantics were, like what, like not enough evidence or some fucking bullshit or like whatever, but it's like. He's still out there. He's already a convicted sex offender. And all these women know and knew that he was the one that killed all these prostitutes, you know, because they would say, like, I would feel creepy in his car. He would ask to see, pay prostitutes just to have them to drive them around. And with their, he wanted their feet specifically, like, up on the dashboard yeah. there. And yeah. he would just drive them around for hours and, like, let them go, you know, some of them. <laughs> oh, no. Sick box. Bell Staffy, I've got a question. Oh, um, Scott, okay. You go and then Skylar. Oh, then oh, you look so tense. I'm lovely. What's wrong? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I laugh too much. Um, <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, in, in your opinion, um, as an activist, as a professional, all that stuff, is there any way to rehabilitate a sex offender? Depend, uh, honestly, I'd say it depends how old they are. Um, and that's based on working with men who have sex offended from the age of 18 upwards. The older ones, when I worked in, um, and assessed and managed their risk, um, told me that it was too late working with them at that age. If they had, we'd have challenged their behavior when they first started offending, which was usually about nine or 10, then we could possibly do something with them. Um, so in terms of the older ones, in terms of the younger ones, young boys and men, fucking definitely. We have to. These are, this, you know, and they're being trained by pornography into being. Pornography, yeah. I blame pornography a lot for, for shit as well. Yeah. What I noticed in Holbeck, because I was in a van, in my camper van, um, and looking down, I noticed a lot of the guys had porn on their phone, you know, and this wasn't just in, in the twilight this was three o'clock on a saturday on a sunday afternoon this was happening around families that were just trying to get on with stuff but when you know what to look for it was all going on at the same time as family it was just surreal it was yes it was surreal it was yeah. surreal when you realize who the players were and what was and they're doing it on. to copy it aren't they and it's right in front of the kids right in front of the kids that are on the park because the the main center for prostitution at the moment is at a church in Holbeck, near a church. And opposite that church, Prady Shop, opposite that church is the main playground for the kids in Holbeck. That's why I'm saying I concentrated on only on the 
residential areas because there was massive child protection and safeguarding concerns. I thought as a probation mm -hmm. officer, given that it was now a magnet for fucking sex offenders all over the yeah. world, for two and a half hours drive, some of them used to come. So yeah. if, you put, if you put that out on a map, that's a massive circumference. Mm -hmm. That I have evidence that men have travelled, and I, I bet you money they've travelled further than that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like Philadelphia is the biggest open air drug market in the states. I mean, and people come from all over just for that, you yeah. know. And then I'm yeah. sure they go and try to pick up prostitutes like afterwards. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, definitely a lot to think about, though. Like now that I live in Virginia, it's you know I I. I moved to get away from a lot of that lifestyle or whatever, um, being like a recovering heroin addict myself. But right. um, but yeah, it's, I mean, now I'm like in this new area and I'm sure it's all around me here too. You know, I just don't know the areas like yet, but it's always like right underneath your nose. You know, they're gonna build a casino here, which I'm really like, what the fuck? A lot of people don't want it for obvious reasons. And uh, I think that's just going to bring a lot of fucking bad shit once it gets yeah. built. Wherever you get gr marauding groups of fucking men, you're going to get serious issues of prostitution. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Where you get the demand, you will get the supply. It, that's a, it's, it's, it's a business model across the world. I'm not an economic, econ I'm not an economic person. I'm a sociologist. Mm -hmm. um, supply and demand. And, you know, when I watched Holbeck as long as I have, because I've watched it for years, watching and how it's evolved. And then that's when I decided how to strike, how I thought we could do it a little bit, put emphasis on the men. Um, yeah. You know, and I say, Lizzie to Council have turned 180 degrees on this because six months ago they were going, oh, yeah, we're going to keep it, we're going to keep it. Oh, yeah, it's working, it's working. Um, and now it's no, it's not. And, you know... Um, I personally think central government have lent on them. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Because it's come from nowhere, this decision. And yes, they're saying, oh, it was, it's COVID that's closed it down. But no, it's it, something, I think it's from central, what program? Yeah, okay. I think it's from central government. That's yeah. where the directive has come. Yeah. Skyla, what were you trying to say? Yeah. Um, one of the women that was uh, with us during our action today, which was walking downtown Detroit and handing out BEC literature and putting up the stickers and the posters. And she is with the radical feminist of Detroit, of Metro Detroit activist group. And uh, she started a sex trafficking think tank. And there were a couple of things she said today. Uh, one was that the, the pimp, they actually hang out outside of foster homes. And yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, when the girls age out and have nowhere to go, mm -hmm. so they're out there, and then the girls age out, they got nowhere to go. They have grab. Um, the other thing that she said that just really made sense. See, America has tons of strip clubs, tons yeah. of, I mean, tons of them, and she called them uh, auction blocks. You know, okay. strip clubs are are simply auction blocks. Yeah. Um. And I just thought that, you know, you might be interested in hearing that. And there was, gosh, there was something else, too, and I can't remember now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's so true. Um, yeah. the st what was it? Statistical significance. You use that. Mm. Uh, Joy uses the term statistical significance a lot. Mm -hmm. and, right. The fact that. Uh, only 2% of rapes are prosecuted, which means with statistical significance, that means that they're not prosecuted. Yeah. You know, rapes are not prosecuted because we're considered property. But I, mean, I wish you could come to America because we definitely need help here. Yeah. The UK is really ahead of us on the curve in a lot of ways, in so many ways. But you're so much smaller than us, and I think it's probably easier for all of the great rad films to get together and you know, and get work done. One thing that, oh yeah, one thing the right is also doing is that we are making connections between feminists from coast to coast. You know, coast to coast. Uh, 
the women we met in Detroit, they didn't even know about the ride until about oh, four days before we hit Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> they hadn't even heard of it. And the minute they yeah. did, they were just like, boom, they were on it. Made sure we had a room, made sure we had food, <laughs> and came and joined us for our actions. Yeah. So, and, and what the neat thing is, is that every time we meet with these women, you know, we're able to sit down and, and hear their stories and the reason they're involved. Oh, and I wanted to mention that there was a woman that I talked to because, I, like I said, I talked to everyone. And she was in the military. She's a veteran. And she had been shot three times, active duty, overseas. And she came home. And she, was, uh, she met a woman that was in her 50s. And the woman was really nice and friendly and everything. And, and she got to know her a little bit. And then the woman invited her over. And she said, there are a bunch of girls, a bunch of friends getting together. Come on, enjoy and, and, and get together with us. And she shows up there. And the woman, there was a bunch of men there. And they grabbed her, shot her up with heroin, and nabbed her. This woman is a veteran. Mm -hmm. You know, and she came home and got sex trafficked in her own city. And this was in Morristown, Pennsylvania. Wow. And PA is an active case. They held her for a month and they drugged her every oh, single mom. day with something, mm -hmm. something she called G. Mm -hmm. I asked her if it was her hit and all. She said, no, it was G, some kind of a date rape drug. G and because she was military, they took her drug so that she could not fight back because mm -hmm. she would have. And she managed, when the man left one day, she managed to call her sister and her mother. And she couldn't wow. even talk. All she could say was, he's coming back and bad things will happen. Right. And she didn't have her glasses. She couldn't see. She couldn't call the main desk because they may be complicit. Right. And this is a person that I met at a hotel. Wow. You know, this happens every day all across yeah. America. Sex trafficking is massive here. Yeah. You know, GHB. That's what G is, I guess. It's yeah, they, yeah. That's they, like they, right, right. It's like really good. But, um, you know, this woman is in hell. Yeah, I mean, once you're, like, shot up with heroin every day, you're physically dependent. So then, right. you know, that becomes your top priority before food, everything else. So you will sleep with motherfuckers for that shit because you get so sick. Well, unfortunately, in America, there are a lot of homeless women. There are a lot of homeless girls. I was a homeless teen. Me too. Uh, for three years, you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. I can tell you, girls will do anything just to get a roof over their head if it's 10 degrees, you know? Mm -hmm. Just to get a roof. Yeah, survival yeah. sucks. And, and the thing is, is that men call themselves our protectors. In America and the UK, they're like, where are your protectors? And then you ask them, well, if it weren't for men, what would we need protecting from? Right. They don't like protects, it when you ask them that. Who, <laughs> yeah. protects, who protects us from you? Yeah. I'm, I'm lovely. No one needs protecting no, from me. No, not you, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's coming a bit late. I'm not you, Gemma. <laughs> because even the men that aren't the ones that are, you know, they think they're really good men simply because they're not raping us. Mm. Yeah, well, great all, guys. all men so darn low that they're really great dudes just because they're not beating and raping women. All men benefit from bad men's actions. Bam. Thank you. So true. All men benefit from rapists because it keeps yeah. women in line, keeps us frightened, and it makes the men look even better than they really are because they're not bad men. That men, good men, benefit from bad men in patriarchy. Yeah. Yeah, and they're all like, "I'm, I'm the good guy. I'm the good guy." Honestly, if if men spent more time saying "Don't be that guy" instead of spending time saying "Not all men." Our world would be a much safer place. Yeah, but when, when a guy says to me, not all men, my brain just goes, well, someone's defensive for a reason, aren't they? Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 But yeah. do you my, know what? My motto is all men. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm not sorry. I don't care. It's all men as far as I'm concerned, unless I know 
it's all men. Yeah, like they, like you know, they do all benefit. But one thing that that gives me hope, to be honest, like because sometimes in in feminism you can you can feel like there's just been an earthquake and you're there with one dust pan and brush and you're just there and you're trying to clean yeah. up. But the thing is, in between the mountains of shit, ahead of other women that are also trying to clean it up. So it it like it gives you more hope and stuff and makes you feel more valid when you hear about the stuff like the stuff that Bell Staffy does is fucking amazing yeah. like she knows yeah. I think that even if she feels she needs protection from me um, but you know like just get getting together with other women from yeah. across the world the internet enables us to do that to share our resources because even though women have less resources even though we do all the fucking work we are more willing to help each other out and that's yeah. that's what that's what gets these changes that's what you know gives yeah. us our victories and we yeah. can do it mm. we can yeah. do it we can we do yeah yeah oh before yeah. i forget yeah. um on saturday the third of july um, in Manchester, we're having a women-only march to protest violence against women and girls. Um, please attend if you can. I say it's women-only. Um, I'm helping organise it. Gemma's helping organise it. There you go, Gemma. They can come to you with <laughs> questions as well. Um, it's it's a it's a march basically uh, between uh, Manchester Feminist Network, Yes Matters, Northern Rad Fem Network, and That's awesome. Make make more noise so yeah. it's you know women only so there's gonna be march um so please attend if you can obviously you in the us i we'll i absolve you i absolve you <laughs> <laughs> okay irs <laughs> <You're not done. laughs> in the city of the suffragettes because it's yeah. about deeds not words isn't it exactly. that is what yeah. yeah anyway yeah. naomi from the brilliant make more noise um, mm -hmm. We'll be presenting that next week, but I've been um, asked to promote it as well, so I've got in there. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I wanted to say a little bit, Skylar knows about um, Turf Collective because she, uh, she usually joins, but um, it's uh, a, little, a little thing that started in the States. Um, a good friend, Jessica helped put it together and it's just kind of morphed into its own thing. Um, but we usually meet two times a week, just like on Zoom calls um, to give each other information and set up like things like stickering and doing like things like a tar, like right now people are dropping flyers in Target, like in pockets of clothes and stuff like that. Um, but Jess wrote a little blurb that I told her I'd give her a little shout out and say, um, the Turf Collective is an international group of decades long activists and newly trans peaked women. We undertake sim simultaneous remote actions due to our bit to end the global campaign of female erasure. Find us on Twitter or Facebook, theturfcollective.com. Um, so just wanted to drop that in. But I love it. I saw a tweet earlier and they put their little um thing on there let me just read i really want to read it out to you what they what they're putting on there okay uh, let me try to find since the start of the target um mixed bathroom policy something like a hundred and six percent uh 196 in, uptick in uh uh sexual assaults that's the one and that's the one and that will help so much open people's eyes because at the yeah. moment they're like oh it's mixed sex never mind but mm -hmm. these things are happening and they're not being at uh, they're not told yeah. it's happening yeah. so yeah that's yeah. brilliant we need to do something like that here well the, re the reason we need those separate spaces yeah. hasn't gone away right it's, it's not worse. Oh. and it has, it has. And and one thing I, I like to point out when I get um Mr. Wolky McBeard face um, you know, <laughs> telling me online, you know, what I should and shouldn't do and think and stuff mm -hmm. is <laughs> I, I point out, you know, I was like, Well, it's men that kill trans people. 
and it's men that kill women. So well, no one would need a safe space if you lot could get your shit together. So, yeah. so right. what, what are you doing? What are you doing to sort this problem out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I tend to get blocks when I ask that, but, you know, and obviously that's devastating and I cry myself to sleep when that happens. <laughs> but the, the reality is, is that, you know, it, it can't be we're hysterical and making a fuss when we're scared of it. But when trans people are scared of it, that's valid. Right. It's, exactly. it's the same problem. It's the same problem. So why don't we, you know, if it if it's about equality and not erasing our rights and all that stuff, then why haven't they come together with us to address male violence so they're safer as well? Well that mm-hmm. that's that's not happened, has it? They're just yeah, telling no. us to shut up. Well, yeah, um and and well, one thing that someone said to me um, months ago now, which which really struck me, um, was she said, oh, you know, this whole trans thing, it's happened really quick and become really big really quick. And that's how you can tell that they're not women, because if they're women, they would have told us to shut up and stop making a fuss for a couple of hundred years and ignored us. And yeah, that's how exactly. you can tell that they're men. So, you know. Yeah. Like, no, it's because they are the men that they listen to from women. How many governments are bending over backwards, changing every law that they've got for women? Let's think about the fact that women until men were included as women in the military, that all of a sudden women can wear lipstick and fingernail polish. But that's just because men got in there and wanted it. So, yeah, they're not oppressed, you know. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's, It's, yeah, so true. So true. And it's again, it's based on gender stereotypes as well. So those gender stereotypes are at the heart of domestic abuse, at the heart of sexual yeah. objectification. They're being reinforced and labelled progressive. I mean, I, I did work around PSAT, which is sort of like relationship education for, for kids in schools in the UK. And I, I obviously did that because I wanted to find out the culture and what happened to my sister, why that happened, how do we prevent that, education being the key and stuff. And I specifically wrote two parts of that, and they don't let nobody's into government very often, I'll tell you that much. And I, I wrote the stuff about gender stereotypes and the harm that they do and the stuff around consent. And now in schools everywhere, the stuff that I have highlighted that, that is needs to be addressed and shown as damaging and harmful, the gender stereotypes, they're now also teaching that gender is progressive and that everyone has a gender identity, which is completely contradicting what right. I wrote. And I'll right. be honest, it pisses me off a little bit yeah. <laughs> that they're doing that. And they're doing it because they're being told that it's progressive, like like places like Stonewall, and they're all about no, it's about being nice. It's it's love is love, it's all it's all about that. And they're completely taken in by it. But to be honest, I think in the UK, as soon as women in prison start suing and all these kids start suing and all this stuff starts happening, they're all gonna put their hands up and pretend they had nothing to do with it. And I think that is what's gonna happen. Yeah. I think also, it needs to start addressing the men and their money. And once it starts, you know, affecting them, then suddenly they're going to be all right, you know, not me, Gov, I, I had nothing to do with it. That's what will happen. They're going yeah. to rinse, rinse their everything. They're going to rinse, rinse it out. But we see them. We know who they are. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we're implementing it. Anyone that can... Any, everyone here on this panel here is fucking documenting everything, you know. Yeah. And yeah, we get banned and stuff like that, but we, we usually come back with a sock account or something, or we're active with yeah. a sock account anyway, you know, because we are persistent. Yeah. I would say B I T C H is, but I won't because this is like <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite word, but, but no, so it doesn't translate it. well, Tanya. Yeah. I know, I know. It doesn't, no. I'm from Jersey, I can't help it. We're persistent, persistent. and that's what did Holbeck, is the persistence and the bombardment, you know? Yeah. And we we are, all of us here exposing, we're all exposers of this fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it's yeah. happening internationally. And now yeah, because everyone here, everyone panel, everyone was panel as an activist that's doing we it. Can yeah. All also just it's nice that we can all contact each other and give each other you know strategies and information. Um, because it's it's an international problem. Women everywhere are dealing with this shit, and they've had it. Yeah, and you've been surprised how many little groups there are forming or that have already formed because of everything that we're doing. You know, mm. they keep it to themselves, but we know it's there, and they they are doing it behind the scenes as well as in front yeah. of the camera, like we are. Yeah, and we're not going to give in. We're not going to stop. I mean, so I've, I've made so many. Sorry, go on. All the um, all this suddenly we're getting all these um, all the poor uh, trans are being demonised in the press and blah blah blah. Do they not? Or what? Wow. All that's happening is that the truth is finally coming out of right. how it's affecting us as a sex yeah. class and how they're trying to infiltrate us as women. We're mm. not having it. Yeah. No, everyone, I feel like finally a lot of women now are like, no, fuck this. I don't care. You want to take my fucking job? I'll lawyer up. You know, that's where I'm at. Like, I, I feel like they've accidentally created those friendship groups as well. Like, because men being horrible to me has honestly got me some of the best friends I have. Yeah. Like, I, I have um, a group of women um it's called the not all men group and <laughs> what what we decided to do because we're all getting the same shit on twitter we all have things in our kitchen called the not all men board and so <laughs> they have all the typical arguments on there like not all men or oh, you're just a lesbian or do you hate your son blah blah you know all the usual crap Mm -hmm. And now, so if I get three in a row, I get to have a chocolate bar. And if I get oh. eight in a row, I get chocolate bar and some wine. And, you know, wow. it's, it's good. Um, and we have, we share tactics. Like if a guy sends me a dick pic, I'll Google search use sanitary products and I'll send that to him. You know, so <laughs> we, we all just come up with coping strategies to deal yes. with. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. Yeah. So we can support each other. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to say before I end the podcast and we obviously will continue probably to talk shit for a little while after the ending, but uh, I just wanted to say thanks to Skylar and Bell Safi, especially, and also Iris, the Ecuadorian mom and Gemma always. Um, this has been <laughs> awesome. It's been real. It's my first time hosting. So uh, I well done. Thank you. I, next time I'll have like all sorts of banners ready with everyone's right stuff. Now that I know how to use this thing. But uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to end the broadcast. Oh, Tanya, and can I ask? Can we end on a joke? I yes. Have a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How many men does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many? Not all of them. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>